Hmm. Hi guys. Hey, hello. Let me confirm whether we started with the live session. Live streaming started. Just a minute. Yeah, one person is there. Okay, for some reason, I'm not able to confirm from my end, guys. If uh, somebody's there, can you please confirm? Are you able to see me, hear me? And can we start? I think I've already put it on the screen what uh, we did. Yeah. Excellent. I think, yeah. The live session has started now. We can start with the great. So let me get back to the dashboard where we were. I think this is one of the dashboards we had. Okay, this was the old one. And I think this is the one which we finally narrowed down to, right? This is the one which we wanted. I'll just close the other one, maximize this. Oops, I think it's the same one. Oops. Sorry, my bad, my bad. I'll just take this one. There you go. Excellent. Great. So, right. So, this is my dashboard. This is what we have. I think this is what we did. I think the last class we uh, went through a uh, table. We went through a bit of formatting in tables. We went through how to create a heat map, what are the advantages of heat map, how can heat map be a tremendous uh, uh, way of uh, sharing the data and sharing the information, especially if there is seasonality in the data. So, I think this is the one, this is one thing, guys. Please. Uh, uh, make a very good note of it that if there is seasonality in the data, heat map is going to reflect your seasonality very, very well. Because I think, see, here in the last session, we've seen that in September, November, and December, the increment in sales, especially the percentage increment in sale, was the highest in these three months. That's what we did. And we found out that, okay, 12, 8, 8, 8, and we can see that maximum contribution is coming from September, November, and December. Right. So if there is seasonality in the data, we'll be able to represent or, you know, have a look at those seasonality in a very, very effective way. And that is the advantage of heat map. OK, and then we went for subcategory profits. I think we did a bit of, uh, you know, uh, formatting on Y axis, formatting on X axis. I think we can just uh, right click over here. We can go to format and we can go to alignment over here and we can say that let's keep it vertical. That way, I think we'll be able to. You know, uh, why to keep it vertical at times? Because in horizontal at times, the entire name doesn't come up, especially if the name is live. For example, this is accessories. This is appliances. It's not coming up that well. So either you right click over here, format and go to format and you either reduce the font. That is one way of doing it, right? You can reduce the font. That is one good way of looking at it. The other good way of looking at this, basically, you can go to alignment and make it a vertical alignment, something like this or this. So this is tilted towards left and this is tilted towards the right. This is these are the two kind of alignments we can go ahead with. All right, guys. So this is what we had. I last time we uh, did this, we understood quick table calculation. I'll start with a bit of a revision of what we did in the previous class. So I'll just take my whiteboard over here. OK. And what we did in the last class was. Whoa. Ha. Right. So I think uh, we did QTC, which is quick table calculation. And in QTC, especially, we saw a running total. Right. In running total, we have seen that how running total does help a analyst to, you know, represent data properly. Then we uh, have seen, and basically, this is cumulation effect. Then we have seen difference. Right. And then we have seen uh, percentage difference, right? And many other things. So this is QTC. We saw heat map. Heat map was actually nothing but, you know, uh, tables with colors, basically. Tables with conditional coloring. Conditional coloring. Very effective because we can see the numbers at the same time. We can see the conditions over there as well. Very, very effective. And then we've seen, uh, took a glimpse of the other things, for example, formatting. This is what we have done, right? Formatting of 
you know, excess formatting and pain formatting. These are the two things that we've seen. Pain is the actual diagram. Excess is nothing but the x-axis and the y-axis. This is what we've seen in the last time. This is basically, uh, you know, till now in Tableau, what we have covered is we just covered, you know, what is, or rather, I should say introduction to Tableau. What is Tableau? We started, then we moved on to something called as data modeling. Right. And then we moved on to, uh, you know, of course, then, of course, we did these three things, QTC, heat map and formatting. And we have also gone through a bit of introduction of the, uh, the, the entire, how should I say, the screen of tab, right? We have gone through the UX UI of tab, basically. Right. Today, we are going to do the most important part. Of course, how can I forget this one? Show me. Show me the small tab, which is again something which is very unique about it, about Tableau, sorry, right? Uh, so the unique about tab, uh, the, this particular tab is nothing but it not only activates a certain diagram. For example, if you select two variables, Tableau, among all the charts that you can draw, activates some of the charts and doesn't activate the other charts among the charts it, which it activates it actually suggests that this is the best chart to draw based on the variables that you selected and how have tableau understood the variables there are two things over here which we need to understand one is dimensions and measures right so in a way at this point of time for simplicity you can understand that measures are nothing but Measures are your numerical value. Majorly, they are numeric values. Now, numeric values can be, well, um, I should say discrete. And they can be continuous as well. Discrete values are the values in which fall in a certain category. For example, age is a category. Unless, well, of course, you're representing age. Uh, you're counting the age in seconds, right? I mean, age of humans. For example, uh, generally, we don't say the age of my son is 25.7 or my brother is 25.7. We say this either is 25 or 26 or 26 running or 25 completed, whatever we say. But we don't say 25.7. That makes age a discrete variable over here. It's a discrete variable. That is, there are categories in which uh, this kind of numerical variable lies, right? There are certain other variables which are well, continuous variable, something like temperature. Temperature can be, uh, well, 30.85 degrees at the same time. If there is a device to measure temperature very, very uh, precisely, then it can be 30.86 degrees as well. That is, the data can exist in both of them. That is, data in a range can take any value. Such kind of values are called as continuous variables. In a range of value, for example, the temperature, you know, let's say if I go for 0 to 100 degrees centigrade, 100 degrees centigrade is where the water boils. We can say from 0 to 100 degrees centigrade, the temperature can take any value. In fact, it can go, go beyond 100 degrees centigrade as well. But in a specific range of numbers, temperature can take any value, right? And that is making temperature a continuous variable. Similarly, pressure is a continuous variable. A lot of, you know, uh, physics related variables kind of chemistry related variables or science related variables are continuous variables discrete variables are generally found in more day to day common life variables like age right salary we see salary generally in numerical terms right i mean that is the salary is like 25000 then we have 26000 yes the salaries are in between as well but i don't think anybody's salary is 25874.3 rupees Right, so the point is, to an extent, salary is also a discrete variable. Even if you consider salary as a continuous variable, consider it. Perhaps, uh, you know, uh, the tax, that is the income tax bracket that you live in, these kind of things are nothing but discrete variables. Discrete variables are the ones which can take only some specific value in a range of value. For example, if the average age of humans is 0 to, let's say, 85 years, let's say, Every human is supposed to live till 85 years, let's say. Then all the values between 0 to 85 cannot be taken by this variable. It cannot be 84.3. It has to be either 84 or 85, right? So that is why that is why these kind of values are called as discrete. 
okay these are measures dimensions are everything which are not measures dimensions might be your textual variable as well for example your name it might be date and time as well right so anything which is in this particular format are called as dimensions dimensions are right now for the sake of simplicity please understand that dimensions are textual and date and time and measures are numeric now once i take you guys to tableau if i take you guys to tableau i think we are working with this these three tables over here order people and returns i'll repeat orders is nothing but the sales data of a certain uh well online retail shop it appears to be right people are nothing but the managing regional managers of certain regions the regions are south north east and west and returns are the list of the items which are returned basically by the customers all right so now if you look at it there's this very small line over here can you just see i'll just highlight that okay i'll just highlight that line so that you can see it properly there you go can you just see this line there's a very thin and very uh, you know i shouldn't say dark or shed but i think the line is very very light if i need to increase the display size let me see hey hi nadi hello is there any uh, problem in reading i'll just expand the screen myself and see are we able to read the screen properly i think it should not be a problem as such but if you guys feel that i need to increase the size of the screen or display of the screen please let me know because i'm using a secondary screen i can easily increase the size of the display think about your comfort okay now this is the small line which i'm mentioning just above discount now if you look at it discount profit quantity sales and orders count are all annexed with something called as hashtag sign okay now hashtag signs are nothing but these are nothing but indication of measures these are all numeric values whereas rest of the signs i mean we are our i mean we, we have already seen this that there are certain data categories and or data types i should say and every data type has a symbol in that for example category is nothing but a textual data type right you can have a text related like abc over here of course you can see there is something called as a globe kind of a symbol over there such kind of variables are called as geospatial variables here the globe kind of a sign right there is a globe kind of sign these two in fact now we can see these this as well and in fact we have four geospatial variables over here isn't it these are all nothing but geospatial variables all right because they have a location they have a latitude and longitude they exist on globe so they are basically geospatial variables all right uh, so yeah this is it these are the kind of variables the line over here segregates the measures and the dimensions okay this happens with all the tables over here the rest of the two tables are not huge anyways right so this is what we have seen today cool i think uh, let let me duplicate this and uh, i think we have seen this as well uh, because the way i go about in tableau i think the entire uh, you know flow of tableau is something like this i think we have already seen this but i think i'll just revise this a bit that the way we work in tableau is something like this that we start with a worksheet right we create a lot of worksheets then we move on to something called as dashboards and then once dashboards and worksheets are created we can use worksheets and dashboards to create something called a storyboard i'm sorry the tool that i'm using is not that great in annotation but you can figure it out right so worksheet dashboards and storyboards this is how we'll work right now we're in the process of creating a lot of worksheets we'll soon move on to how to create dashboard there is a good small logical process of creating a dashboard you will not just go about and start working on sheets and you know start creating dashboards no there is a logical way of approaching a certain dashboard okay what is that logical way how can we look into it this is what we're going to see in the upcoming classes but today in the next probably today's class and the next class we will focus on creating great worksheets in tap now let me remove the annotation i'll just delete that come back okay i'll just duplicate this i'm duplicating this because i want the 
entire formatting that I've done on the sheet to be copied to this particular sheet as well. मुझे दोबारा नाम देने की जरूरत दोबारा ये कलर करने की जरूरत दोबारा ये एक्स एक्सेस और वाई एक्सेस को कलर करने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी एंड दैट इज वाई वी कैन जस्ट से दैट इफ आई डन कंप्लीट फॉर्मेटिंग इन वन शीट हाईली सजेस्टेड दैट यू मूव ऑन टू द सेम लेवल ऑफ फॉर्मेटिंग इन दी other sheet that is you duplicate that particular sheet the formatting gets copied okay now i'll go for sub category wise profits in fact i think i'll not go for profit so here we have column rows and columns and row shelves i think we we'll discussed this as well whatever we put it'll become a row and column respectively depending on which variable we have put in over there and accordingly apna chart banta jayega let me take out profit from here and let me try and put up sales over here so these are my sales If I click over here on this icon, here on this icon over here, yeah. In fact, I'll say these two icons are there to uh, uh, arrange the data in ascending or descending order, right? So if I click on one of them, it sorts the entire data in the ascending order. This one, right? These two. And if I don't. Well, the data remains as it is, but let's sort it out. So these are all nothing but sales. We can say these are nothing but sales. Okay. Now let me start by understanding. See, we have understood show me. We have understood column shelf and row shelf. Well, column shelf and row shelf not completely, but we will. We'll will of course understand each and every aspect over here. We can sort it out. Sorting is of course over here as well, right? So okay. Oh, sorry, clicked on mistake. Now, if I click on drop down, we can have a lot of things. For example, these are the things which are related to filter. We haven't seen filter yet, so I think the top four marks will not be able to understand right now. Sorting we have already seen. Formatting we will see. We have already seen, but we'll keep on seeing formatting time on time basis. We have something called a show header included in tooltip. Don't worry about these kind of things. And finally, most important thing we have seen measures in which we can change what we are seeing in this particular. Sheet. For example, here if I click on this numerical variable sum sales, now we can see that a lot of things are do come up in measures. Right now, the by default measure that I'm doing for sales is sum, but I can change it. I can change it to average, so I can see where are my average sales. Right now, if I click on this and say instead of average, give me median. So I'm getting the median sales over here. I can rearrange it. But for the sake of simplicity, let's understand. Let's say I want to go for sum right now. I'll keep it as sum. So this is nothing but I'll just click on this to arrange in the ascending or the descending order right now. Okay. Now, one more thing I like to understand is that uh, is there a way in which I can format the Hey guys, really sorry due to some technical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The video was paused. The video was stuck due to some technicalities. Apologies for that. Let me start presenting the screen again. Just a minute. Just give me a minute, guys. Yeah.
All right. I think we're all set, guys. Just give me one more minute. And I think we are there. So there's something unexpected happened over here. Excellent. I'll start presenting my screen. There you go. Right. Here it is. All right. So let me start with this. Let me, uh, this is the Tableau, uh, the Tableau file we are talking about. Okay. Now, uh, okay. Now, I think in the entire uh, pane, what we have seen is that Just a minute. I think I need to go for another device so that I can follow what's going on in this session. Just, one, guys. Just give me a moment. I think we'll be up and running very soon. So I need to find a process through which I can look at your comments as well. I don't know who missed the comments. So I need to find out. So I've actually logged into another device so that I can follow your comment. That would be great. I think this is it, guys. Now I can follow you. Excellent. Great. So let me start with this now. Now, if I look at it, uh, see, this is the graph that we have. No, uh, what we had to do was, I think we've seen everything. We've seen show me, we've seen what these tables and peoples are, what this analytics we haven't seen completely, but we'll come back to this. And ye tab to hum dekhi rahe, upar ka ribbon jo hum dekhte hi ja rahe hai. Right. Now, I think there are two major important parts over here. One is basically pages and filters and marks. Pages we throw sideline karte hai. Filters and marks are something which are very, very useful over here. Right. Let me start with filters. Okay. If I start with filters, right, so uh, what do we do in filters? Filter is basically used to slice and dice the data. For example, if the entire data, this is my entire data. This is the entire table over here. And we have, let's say, it's a very rough uh, level of application right now. Let's say there are 10,000 points. And I want to see, uh, let's say there's three categories over here. One, one is, let's say, furniture. The other one is, let's say, technology. And then we have office supplies. These are the three kind of categories that we have. And I want to see the data of only tech. Let's say I just want to do this. Okay. Now, how can we do this? How can we have this kind of stuff? Now, this, what happens over here is that I want to see selected portion of my data or what I want to see is that the chart should represent only a selected portion of my data. So how can we do this? We can apply filters over here. And uh, again, you'll be amazed by looking at what is the level to which, you know, the filters have applied over here. Uh, guys, I hope I'm uh, very clearly audible and visible to all of you. I think please confirm once are there any disturbances if there are any disturbances feel free to put it on the chat box okay please feel free all right now let me start with this and right so i duplicated this and i put in sales over here so i'll just go for subcategory wise instead of profits i'll say sales okay now let me go for sales. All right. Now, what do I want to do now is that, let's say, the first thing that I want to do is that these numbers over here are in thousands. Right. Can I convert them into a favorable type over here so that I can keep them in thousand? Well, thank you. Thank you, Naveen. Thanks a lot. Great. I'll, what I'm saying is that can just like we're formatting the x-axis and the y-axis, as we've seen in the previous class, can we format the labels over here as well? Can we format the labels? Now, answer to that question is 100%. We can do that. 100% we can do that. Right. How? We can just go over here, right-click, and go to format. Over here. Once we... At now we need to select the field. Let's say I select the field of sum of sales. Now what I need to do is to go to pane over here and go to numbers. Go to numbers over here, guys. 
in numbers will go for something called as numbers custom and in numbers custom as the moment i select number custom can you see changes that has happened over here those are in the right what i can go for is i can say that i do not want any decimal place i do not want any decimal place okay so i can click over here go to numbers custom and see that do not give me any decimal place display unit has to be in thousand now thousand if i say thousand can you just see that's 330k 328k the, the display unit which was initially none which was 330007 if i select it as thousands it become 330k and 328k over here right 24k slightly easier way of representing the numbers over here what do you think now i can prefix something over here for example if i want to prefix dollar all of them will come out to be in dollars but i don't think that you know required over here now once i do this i can get out over here and say that okay let's decrease the size uh, font size as well so that we can just you know align with the font we don't want the entire you know uh, the label to occupy a lot of spaces as compared to the rest of the text over here it depends right so or probably i can say that okay the text in the label should be higher and the text over here should be smaller here the text should be smaller so i'll say that okay right let's do that oops i think i've done it for the same thing i can select the field over here which is my let's say sub category and i'll say that instead of i think this is already of the minimum size minimum size minimum size yeah we can go for sum of sales and in the scale we can say that yeah we can go for normal and we can go for the font which is slightly at the lesser side now the font is reduced of x we can do that okay now excellent great right so this is how we can you know set up our graph for what i'm about to do i'm about to use filters and marks over here okay so i'm about to use the filters and marks just not i'll just go to the display setting i'll just put uh this on my bigger screen so that we guys you guys can see properly now right adjustment guys okay there we go right so the screen is up and running finally i think there was a minor power cut off two to three minutes guys i'm sorry for that right so this is the case. now i'm about to use filters and marks now what do i need to filter i need to understand as i have already mentioned over here in my you know uh, in the whiteboard that we are talking about that is in the whiteboard i wanted to see only for technology the data only for technology so what i'll do is the technology is nothing but a category that is i want to see the data as per categories i can take the category and put it on filter right now the filter the moment i put it on filter the business intelligence portion of tableau gets awakened right and say that okay the filters can be applied in many ways again this is one of the Higher level aspect of tab. That is, filters can be applied in many ways. One is through general. The general filter is a manual filtering. Basically, you can just select which portion of the data that you want to see. It's manual. Second one is wild card. We'll come to that. Third one is conditional filtering, and third one is top filtering. One of my favorites. Okay. So let's look at general filtering. In general filtering, it says that okay, you want to put category in the filters. There are three kind of categories. One is furniture, office supplies, and technology. if i click on all of them i either i manually click all of them or i can click all over here all three of them are selected now if i say apply and click on okay now i have i'm given the ability to put up uh, you know uh, the filters over here okay i'm given the ability to put up filters over here correct thank you thank you yeah now if i look into it 
I can just click on this drop down, and the moment I put category and drag it out on the filters, the category starts, right? The depending upon what kind of category have we chosen over here, whether it's general or wildcard or conditional or top, whatever type of filter you've chosen as a user, that filtering will be applied. And now you can click on this drop down and do one simple thing that you can say show filters. Brilliant thing, show filter. That way, what happens is there is a card which comes up over here. I'll just hide this card. What I, I told was click on this drop down and click on this show filter. The filter will start coming over here. Now, using this particular portion, you can filter out the data. So this is only furniture, only office supplies, only technology. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll just go for this. Only furniture. And check this. Only office supplies. And check this. Only technology. Right. This is what is happening over here. Now, in case you're wondering, sir, all the bahut sare sub categories are the, what happened over here because obviously not all the subcategories will belong to each and every category, right? So if, if I look at it, all these subcategories do belong to any one of these three categories. So if I select furniture, only these subcategories which belong to furniture categories being shown, right? Uh, whereas if I look at office supplies, only the cat subcategories which belongs to office supplies is being shown over here, right? When it comes to technology, the same is the case with technology, okay? Now I'll go for all and you'll have to go for come back over here. This is how we can apply the filter. Now, again, even in this particular card, this is called as a card in which it's a filter card. As you can see, there's something called as hide card coming up over here. It's called as filtered card, filter card. Now we can change the setting of this as well. We can see, understand the kind of liberty which is being provided as a business intelligence tool. I can go to this particular card and say that. I'll click on this little drop down over here. Can you just see the little drop down here? This one, right? We can search for a specific options if the number of options are too much, but we can go for this as well. Now, if I click on this drop down and we can go for see edit filter, remove filter, apply to worksheet, and blah blah blah. All these kind of things are there 100% there. Let's hold them right now. Please focus on all the value, all the things which are given below this particular line. There's a small line over here below edit title. And we can see single value list, single value drop down, single value slider, multiple value list, multi values drop down, multi values custom list. What do you mean by this? What we mean is nothing but these are the ways in which we can represent our filters. This is how we can represent our filter. If I click on single value list, it's going to give me the filter as a single value list. There is among all the four possible values, one is all, the other is furniture, office supplies, and technology. We can say, we can select any one of them. Okay, we can select any one of them. Just matters, yeah. All right, cool. So we'll go for office supplies, we'll go for furniture. This is how we can play with filters over here. We can also select single value drop down. And this is very common because being a drop down, it occupies very less space. Later, when we move to dashboarding and storyboarding, guys, you'll understand that space is a big, big variable over here. You don't want to occupy a lot of space on your dashboard or your uh, sheets. Reason? Most of the space should be occupied by something which is telling a story. So these kind of things. Are, now, if I go for something like, let's say, a multiple value list. It's a multiple value list, which came up as multiple values. It's occupying some space over here. But if I make it something like single value drop down, I'll just have to click on the drop down. And we can just say that if I want furniture, we can select furniture, office supplies, or technology. Okay. Let me select all right now. We can also go for one beautiful thing, which is called a single value slider. Now, single value slider is something like this, almost as, as if you just need to slide it out, right? There are two icons. One is towards the left arrow, other one is right arrow, something like what, what is there in your keyboard. 
you can just click on them and the next category will show up. So furniture is showing up. You click on the right one, office supplies will show up. You click on the right one, technology will show up. And you can navigate between the categories or I should say the components of the filter with ease just by one click. Very nice. Okay, very nice representation. This is one of my favorite, especially when I want to represent, uh, I want to put filters, uh, filters with such a variable in which there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, items are there in the variable. For example, we can see in category, there are only three categories right now, furniture, office supplies, and technology. There are only three categories. But what if there is a variable in which there a lot of categories are there? Let me see whether they're able to find out or not. Yeah, I think we're back. Cool. Now, uh, right, so that's the case over here, guys. I'll just uh, take out category from here, fil uh, from filters, and let me try and put in country and region. Now, if I put in country and region, oops, there's only one country. So I think uh, let, let's take the next one, which is my state. Let's do the state wise. States over here, the plenty of states. Okay, so if I click on all and I say that apply and okay, now we'll just click on this particular drop down show filter, and that's the problem, isn't it, guys? So many states now. This filter itself, this card itself, is occupying so much of area that is it's already causing, causing a bit of you know uh, professional distress to me right now. What I can go for is I can click on this drop down and say that just give me a single value slider. I'll just keep on sliding. Now, single value slider is used when I'm looking at the sales of Alabama. If I move further, Arizona, we can go for Arkansas, right? Kansas, rather, I should say. This is California. This is Colorado. And we can just navigate. Keep on navigating. Keep on navigating. And we'll keep on moving between sales. Now, you can realize that. You can realize that, right? the orders are also changing so the descension the descending order remains as it is even if i go through filters see is it it so on like this so this is how we can do it right i think no other filter is more effective over here as compared to single value slider or we can say multiple values drop down multiple values drop down is also okay in which i can just drop down and multiple values can be selected but I think the best way of, uh, in this case, in which the number of items in the filter is so much, we can go for a single value drop down or a single value slider. Single value drop down, if you jump to a specific state, for example, just tell me what is happening with Minnesota. Minnesota ki saath kya rabi? This is Minnesota. This is what is happening with Minnesota. Or you can tell me what is happening with Maine. Or what is happening with, let's say, Oklahoma or Ohio. This is what is happening with Ohio. So drop downs are very useful when we need to jump to a certain city. We don't have to go state by state and represent the data. But if I had to go for state by state to represent the data, the best thing is single value slider over here. I can actually start right from this beginning and I can go for, I can write from the beginning that this is all sales over here. And let's start, let's looking at each and every state one by one. This is my Alabama. This is my Arizona and so on like this so there are 25 states you want to cover there's a long meeting ek ghante ki meeting hai ek ghante mein aapko har state ko discuss karna hai aap ek ek karke states dikhate jaiye koi dikkat nahi everything will be fine over here okay so this is what is filter it's called filter okay now uh, i'll just for the moment hide this card okay this is i'll just hide this filter oops i'll just show filter and i'll select all and then hide it drop down hide card so that that space doesn't get occupied we can always bring that card back by clicking on this particular drop down over here this drop down and click on this drop down and go to show filter the filter will be shown over here okay we can go to hide card and and number we can go to info over here now as i mentioned already that 
if I just go to edit filter, we can edit the filter. And by editing the filter, I mean we can actually select which type of filter you want to apply. You want to go for general filter. Now, general filter is simply manually selecting which part of the data that you want to present on this particular chart. It's manually selecting that particular part of the data. Wild card is something else. We'll come back to this. I'm coming back to these things. Condition is something else. Topic is something else, right? So this is general, right? General also says that, do you want to put all the states or you want to select it from a list? I said, let's put all. Let's not worry about that. So this is general filtering. If I go for wild card, wild card, it's simply, it says that, for example, wild card is a crazy way of applying filters. For example, I want to start, I want to see, for example, some crazy CEO, perhaps in an organization, wants to see the states which are starting from the letter S. He wants to see only the states which are starting from letter S. He has his own reason. Probably numerology may believe karta ya kuch karta. He wants to see what is happening with the states which are starting with S or which contains the letter S. For example, if I go back to the previous uh, case in which he wants to see the states which are starting with S, you can click on start with and you can go for S over here. So what happens is now the filter automatically is applied only on the states in which there is S. As we can see, this is how it looks like, which contains an S or which starts with an S. Okay, you can edit filter and go to wildcard over here. It starts with S. It might, if I click on contains S, then obviously a lot of states will come because there's hardly any state uh, which will not have S. There are plenty of states which will have S over there, right? So I'll just click on OK. And this is the data of all the states which contains S. Now, if I go for edit filter and we can go to wildcard and say that it ends with, let's say, uh let me uh go for city now it ends with city for example uh new york city let's say so if it ends with city only give me the data of the all these states which ends with city and there'll be a problem because i don't think there's any state which is ending with city so if i click on okay the entire data from the screen is gone because there's hardly any state which is ending with city ending with this particular word city so I probably will say that, okay, it might end with, let's say, Z. Is there any state which end with Z? Let's see. If I apply, nothing happens, which means that there is no state. T, how about T? Let's apply. Now there are states which are Detroit is a state, which is ending, ending with T. So many states like Detroit will be there in the US, and they are ending with T over here. Right, guys? So now we can show filter, and we show filter the logic appears over here. See, star T. Star T would mean... And this logic actually tableau is taken from MySQL. MySQL does this, right? So a star T. That is, it should end with T. Star indicates any number of letters before T. Any number of letters before T, but it should end with T. So these are all ending with T. I practically haven't seen a lot of application of wildcard. In the professional life, means uh, you know, application has. The only application I can see is that there are plenty of states. Let's say 500 states are there. I don't want to see each and every state. And you want to move on to a certain state very, very carefully, very quickly. You can just click on exact match and you can write OHIO. I'll just go for OHIO, apply it. And now I'm looking at the data of only OHIO. We can click on show filter and this is what is the case over here. Okay. I'll click on this and remove this. So this is wildcard kind of filter. Then wildcard zada mazdar I think we can well you know clear it up. Let's clear the filter over here. Okay, and we'll clear the filter and we we'll say that I don't want to apply for wildcard, so I'll just take the state out of it and put state back on so that I ensure that the filter, the wildcard filters are gone. All okay. Now I'll move to the third one, which is a conditional filter. I'll edit filter, go to the condition. And here we can actually go for filtering the data, slicing and dicing the data based on a certain condition. Now, let me take you back to the chart. The chart is right now representing sales. The chart is right now representing sales. 
but let's say i want to filter based on the quantity sold i want to see the sales of only those states in which quantity sold are higher than a certain value right or probably let's not move on to quantity sold let me let's, let's move on to state only and i'll say that based on the condition that these sales the sum of sales is greater than right now we can select it okay we can say greater than or equal to a specific number let's say 100 thousand thousand ten thousand lakh hundred uh, sorry lakh is hundred thousand right and now if i apply the entire filtering will happen only for the states in which the sales is above 100,000. And we can see that this is 200,000, 2,000 over here. Okay, very interesting, very interesting. Sales, sum of sales is greater than this thing. We can go for, let's say, equal to. And if I apply this, there is no state which is having only exactly 100,000 sales. Okay. So you can go for not equal to 100,000 will give me all the other states. Okay. Less than 100,000. Well, we can apply that as well. And we can see the states, the data of the states which are selling less than 100,000 over here. Right. So I'll go for edit filter, go to condition over here and say that, okay, now. So the diagram is representing sales. The chart is representing sales, 100%, right? But if I want to, can I apply filter on some other value? For example, give me only the sales of only those states in which I've sold more than a certain specific quantity. For example, I've sold more than 200. If I apply this, now you're looking at the data of only those states. Please understand that the y, the x axis over here is giving me subcategory. The data is getting filtered for all the states in which the quantity sold is greater than 200. Okay. Right. And yeah, plenty of things can be done. We can always say that it's a region and it's not count or, well, let's say order date. Right, order date, maybe we can do it. Let's go for numerical variable only. Okay, I'll go for quantity greater than 200. Let me go for quantity greater than 2000. If I apply it, now I'm looking at the data in which the states of the states which are having quantity greater than 2000. So this is how we can apply conditional filtering. We can apply conditional filtering via formula as well. We can put in our own formula. But this will become too technical too soon in only the third session of Tableau. So let's hold it. We'll move on to calculation fields. We'll see how formulas are applied in Tableau. And then once we are able to understand that, I think then it'll be better to move on to using form line filters. Okay, I'll take you guys to the next portion, which is my top. What is top? Top is nothing but give me top 10, top 15, top 20, top 5, top 10, whatever it may be. All right, so I'll go for let's give me top 10. Right, give me top 10 by sales of sum, or I should say sum of sales. So now the entire diagram is going to give me the top 10 subcategories because these are subcategories over here. No, how many subcategories are there? One, two, three, four, five, 17, I guess. Right, 17 subcategories are there, and you want to let's say represent only top 10 or let's say top five right now based on the sum of sales now if i apply this if i apply this the chart what happened over here oops sorry sorry i'll go for none over here yeah come back now if i apply this now the entire data is of only sales which are of top five right top five sales right this is the data of top five state sales okay because I'm applying filter on state. So the entire data is of, you know, top five states. You know what, in case there's a bit of confusion, what we can go for is we can go for the next type of diagram, but we'll move on to that soon. But right now, let me take out state from here for the sake of slight simplicity. Let me try and put order date over here. Okay, because I think we start, we, we have put in a geospatical variable in filters, we see it works, okay. We can put in, uh, you know, uh, various other variables over here as well. And we have seen four times the filter are being applied here, right? So if I just click on all and click on OK, 
I'll say show filter. We can see the filter over here, but right now let's hide card. I'll just drop, click on this drop down, edit filter. We can go for top. Okay, we've seen this as well. So this is top 10 by sum of sales. We can select top 10 by profit as well. We can say top 10 by average profit. Now the data changes to states, only those states which are top 10 states by average profit. So the data of it is representing the data of all the subcategories which are being sold only in top 10 state because I have applied the filter of state top 10 by average profit. We can go for top 10 by average quantity sold the filter changes and so on like this. So these are the four kinds of filter general wildcard condition and top filters right this is how we can apply filtering and once you're done with apply applying filtering you can just drag out your variable from the filter you'll be able to see that i think the best way of applying very manual filter is let's put you know various other variables over here as well now guys what happens is that right now if you have observed, I'm not sure about that, but if you have observed, I put in only the categorical textual variable over here. For example, state, although it was a geospatical variable, but it was a textual variable. So that state is being treated as a text. These are all text over here, isn't it? Category, if I put in category, the three categories are text over here. City, if I put in, if I put in city over here, all the cities are text. But the next question comes in, can I apply the filter of numeric values? Can we apply the filter of numeric values? Right now, I'm looking at a chart, which is nothing but a chart of, you know, the chart consists of sales of subcategories, total sales of subcategories. Now, can I take one of the numerical variables and put it on filters? Let's see. I want to understand how sales uh let me take the numerical variable of discount i'll take discount and put it up over here see something else came up see guys pay attention on the screen if i put customer name which is a textual variable if i put it up over here something like this comes up general and you can select the entire customer name and so on like this if i put category something like this comes up right if i put in state something like this comes up but if i put a numerical variable something like discount that uh, thing didn't come up something else came up now discount being a numeric value it says do i need to keep all the values of discount i'll say well let's keep all the values i'll say next and now i'll have to look for what is the range of value because tableau has identified the minimum discount to be zero and the maximum discount to be 0.8 which is like 80 percent okay we can select the least value or the most value or the special character values when we'll include all values over here. This is the range of values and it includes null values, let's say. Now, if I apply and click on OK, now discount as a numeric variable is being, you know, uh, you're looking at discount as a numeric variable in filters. That is, you can see the sales of certain categories over here based on a certain range of discount. For example, if I just click on this drop down and click on show filter, now the show filter is not giving me that option of slider or drop down or whatever, multiple value, single value. It says that select a range, just select a range. I can actually type in my range over here. I can say that, okay, let's show, let me put this in two categories, 0.2. So let me, please give me the sales when I give 20% discount, till 20% discount. Then I can drag it up and say that, let's try and understand till 40% discount. From 20 to 40% discount, right? This is the sales, which is between 20 to 40% discount. The observation that I'm able to see is that not all the subcategories are giving 20 to 40% discount. Now I want to understand which of the subcategories are giving extreme high discount. And by my definition of extreme high discount is something which is greater than 50% going up to 80%, the maximum value. So if I look at it, 
machines, tables, blinders, phone, copiers, bookcases, furnishing and appliances. Out of 17 subcategories, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 subcategories, half of the subcategories are giving heavy discount, which is, well, a bell to me. It rings a bell. I don't like that. I don't like that by any means. Because if I give a lot categories, I give a heavy discount, then God knows. Okay. So if I just say that, let, let me increase the definition of heavy discount. Let me start it from 75, or I should say 70 to 80 percentage. Right? I'll write it exactly. 0 0.7. So now there are four. In fact, I'll just say greater than 0 0.7. Right? So I'll go for 0 0.71. Oh, that way, they can say that 70 to 80% discount is being offered only in binders and appliances. Very interesting, right? Binders and appliances. This are giving me highest discounts over here. Sales, sirf binders generate kar raha hai. Appliances uti sales generate nahi kar raha hai. Fir bhi heavy discount de rahe. Right? So that is something which can be dealt with numerical variables. Point is, in this particular filters tab, we can put in textual variables in which manually we can select which particular type of filter items that we need to select or we can go for top or we can go for wildcard or we can go for conditional filter in filters if i just edit this filter there is no those four options are not coming those four options are only for textual kind of variables okay now all right now if i look into it Right. So point is filters may textual or numerical dono category ke variables. Dale ja sakte. We can in fact put in order date as well. If I put in order date, the first thing is going to say is are you going for relative date or range of date or years, quarters, whatever you want. To. So if I select years, it's going to give me only filter of years. Okay. Now if I going to put in let's say quarters. It's going to give me the filter of only quarters. I'll be able to see only the how we have performed in all four quarters over here, which is not a bad way of looking at the data, depending on the specificity of the requirement. So if I'll go for order date and say that, let's keep it simple. Let's look at yearly, how, mu how much of the sales has been done right now. If I click on next and say that, let's select all and let's apply it. That is where our filter gets selected. We'll say that let's show filter. I'll say that let's convert this into a slider. That way I'll be able to slide and look at each. This is a here slider fits in beautifully because I would like to see the, uh, the, the performance of each and every year. Here I would not like to jump to a certain year generally, right? Specific cases are different, but generally I like to go year by year. Okay. So I'll go for 2018. This is the sales of 2018. We can see this is 2019, this is 2020, this is 2021. Right. So this is oh, how it is. In fact, we can click on this drop down and of filter. We can select it to quarter. We can change it to quarter from here. Right now, the filter is of quarter. Now you can see that what have you, how have you done when it comes to every quarter? Here we go. Q1. Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. But, but guys, guys, this is slightly complicated. So please pay attention. Okay. Now you say, okay, sir, you're representing the data of quarter one. Okay. You're representing the data of quarter one. Fine. But which quarter? There are four years over here. Because if I just look into it, if I change it to years, you'll be able to observe that there are four years over here. 18, 19, 20, and 21. Right. Oops. I'll just go for control Z and say show filter. Right. So which quarter are we talking about over here? Quarter one of which year? I'll say quarter one of all the four years. I'll say quarter one of all the four years. Okay. So this is quarter two of all the four years. That is aggregation. So this is sum of sales of quarter two. This is sum of sales of quarter three, quarter four, quarter five. Oh, sorry, there's no quarter five. I'm so sorry. <laughs> In the flow, I kept on saying that, right? So yeah, quarter one, two, three, and four can be done like this, All right? So filter itself has a lot of options over here, All right?
Now, if you say that, sir, I don't want to look at data like this. See, if I, am, I understand that you are representing the data of every quarter. This is Q1 of all the four years combined. This is Q2 of all the four years combined. Q3 of all the four years combined. But I don't want it like this. I want quarter one of first year. All the four quarters of first year followed by all the four quarters of the next year. So quarter by quarter move. Karte na. Let's see how have we done in sales. So quarter one of 2018, quarter two of 2018, quarter three of 2018, quarter four of 2018 should be followed by quarter one of 2019 and so on like this. Can we do that? The answer to that question is yes. You can click on this drop down and instead of selecting year, quarter, month, day and this over here, this is representing aggregated level data filtering. You can select this quarter over here. This one. And now you can say that I'll take the entire range over here. Don't worry about it. So first quarter till the last quarter. I'll click on OK. And I'll show the filter. Now the filter talks about the entire quarter. Quarter 1, 2, 3 and 4. You can select your way of representing the data. For example, here you need to define which particular quarter we are talking about. Right. So quarter one, let's say I want to understand quarter one. So this is my quarter one. All right. This is my quarter two. I'm so sorry. This is quarter one of 2018. This is my quarter four of 2019 and so on like this. I can change the data over here. Okay. Right. So plenty of things in filter will keep on coming back to filters. We'll keep on coming back. Right. We'll keep on coming back to filters. Filter is something that it is inevitable. We'll have to keep on coming back to filters time and time again. Right. So I think it's best that there are certain things which are very, very specific over here. We keep those specificities for upcoming sessions. For example, people might say that what is attribute over here? Well, it is important to next. Yes, it is. What is add to context? Extremely important, right? But let us come back to these kind of things later on. Okay. So if I put in any filter over here, those options will turn up. Okay. If I put in any filter over here, all those options will turn up. Isn't it? Kuch mein jada option aenge, kuch mein kam aenge. Right. So add to context, attribute. It depends upon what kind of variable am I putting in filter. For example, state being a geospatical variable, not a lot of things are there. Category being a textual variable, again, will not have a lot of things on this drop down. Right. Where is, where is, where is discount being a numeric variable? Once I apply it, there'll be a lot of things on this one as compared to the other textual variables. Okay. So let's come back to filters time and time again. But we have definitely seen in this session the basic use of filters. And now I would love to take you guys to something called as marks. Right. And this is very, very important in Tableau. Marks are very, very important in Tableau. 100%. Guys. Okay. Uh, I think before that, we can just right click over here, go to format and I'll say that. Let me change the color of this. Do we need to? Let's do this. Pain. I don't think so. Do we? What do you guys think? I'll just make it bold and make it. Mm, let's keep it as it is. Cool. Right. So it is uh, right now it is representing sales of this thing. Now, guys. Uh, Right. Now, what I'll do is I like to select a simple variable over here, which is not having a lot of items in them. Let me see how does a region go. I'll take the region and drop it down over here. Okay. Regions are only two. I don't like this. Oh, so four. Right. Uh, ship date, of course, is the case. Category ship mode. Let me see how many ship modes are there. And if I take ship modes, there are only four ship modes over here. I think subcategory is the best that we can go for right now. All right, guys. So let's start by understanding marks. Right. This is my mark. 
over here. This is the last aspect of my tableau pane discussion. इसके बाद हम लोग टैब्लू पेन डिस्कशन में मार्क्स नहीं देखेंगे राइट आई थिंक सॉरी पेन के ऊपर ज्यादा डिस्कस नहीं करेंगे विल मूव ऑन टू वेरियस टफ वेरियस थिंग्स ओके जस्ट मिनट राइट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्ट ओवर हेयर दिस पर्टिकुलर पोर्शन This is called as marks. Can you just see? There is a rectangle over here. Understanding this and keeping that understanding in your mind will be very, very important. Will be extremely important. Understanding that and keeping that understanding in your mind is very important. This is where you can, you know, uh, make charts like a pro if you understand how marks are used. Marks is the most. It's the. It's a very unique feature in Tableau, and it's one of the most effective one. You can make charts look like. crazy right now uh first of all let me start with marks uh, i'm done with praising it okay so let's see very very important in tableau extremely important tableau now if i look at it if i click on this automatic bar there are five uh, portions over here we can see automatic there is something called as automatic or there's there's a drop down which is let's not call it automatic it's a drop down there is something called as colors something called as size something called as label then we have something called as details and we have something called as tool tip ye total 6 cheeze hain marks mein marks consist of these six elements over there these are the six elements of marks let's try and understand each and every element one by one okay So let me start with automatic over here. What do you mean by this particular drop down, which is right now reading automatic? Okay. So now let's click on this drop down. What happens over here in automatic is that this particular drop down helps us override the show me portion. Show me portion is right now suggesting that draw bar. now if i say that i do not want to draw a bar fine you have suggested you have done your part of your suggestion you have done your part of your suggestion but i don't want bar over here i want line change it to line now i can change it to line so marks have the authority over show me right to change the graph right now in show me you can see that you will not be able to draw line chart over here if you go through show me you will not be able to draw line chart but once you come to marks you can change it to line so marks gives you the authority to change it up you can change it to area as well you can change it to square as well plenty of things you can change it to circle change it to shape change it to text only text are represented over here very bad not that great i'm just showing you you can change it to maps god knows what this is representing you can change it to gantt chart which is also one of the polygon there's plenty of things out there man i mean let's not get into that right you can change it to any one of them but for the sake of simplicity let me keep it to bars only right now all right now let me turn this up let me see how it looks like in horizontal i'll just click on this particular bar to change the axis over here this particular part over here guys if i click on this again it'll become something like this I was just seeing which one seems to be better. Here, I think this subcategory is not very visible, so I'll do. I'll just change it up. I think it's better that we put it like this. Okay, guys. Okay, okay. Right now, let me start with this. The bar is the one which is autom, which is right now selected over here. Now, the five elements are. So this is basically used to override the show me portion over here. show me was not allowing you to draw area chart or line chart using the variables that you selected on column and row shelf but with marks you will be able to change that you will be able to say that okay give me line so you'll get line chart and so on like this okay that's the advantage the first advantage of marks the other advantage is we can color each and every bar differently 
we can size each and every bar different. This color, size, label, detail, and tooltip are nothing but five attributes of each and every bar. I repeat, these five things, color, size, label, detail, and tooltip are nothing but five attributes of every bar which is drawn over here. This is a bar chart. If we draw some other charts over here, it will be an attribute of that particular chart, right? For example, if I want to color it up, now think about it. Okay, I'll just uh, remove the label for the time being. It's a very plain bar chart right now. The plain bar chart consists of the length of the bar is nothing but representing the sales of subcategories. Okay, now if I want to, let's say, use the color portion over here, how can I do that? Now I can do one thing that is I can take up, let's say any variable. For example, let me take category and put it in color. See what happens. Think about it. See what happens if I take category and put it into color. Yeah. Right. So if I put it in category, if I put category in color, see what happened. Every bar is given a specific color over here. Every bar is given a specific color. Right. Now, this color is these three. For example, if this is the color of technology, you can see that, okay, all the red ones belong to technology. These are the subcategories which belong to technology. Okay, I'll just right click, quickly format this uh, subcategories, right? And I'll say that alignment has to be something like this, right? Now, uh, I'll just clear, close this. Cool. So I can see red ones are technology. The yellow ones are office supplies and the blue ones are furniture. So we can easily locate, okay, what's going on? We can easily locate that. Fair enough. This is how, you know, we can look into this thing. Okay, if I'll just click on this, probably change this up and try and see that whether I'm able to do it as per, you know, some other fields over here, but I'm not able to do that right now. So, okay, let's keep it as it is. Right now, in this chart, we can see that each and every bar is colored as per the subcategory it belongs to. Okay. Right. Now. If I click on this drop down and say that, okay, these are the three colors over here. Furniture is blue, office supplies, technology. Now we can take out this category, say that, okay, category is not the right thing right now. Let me try and put in uh, so category is one. We can go for, let's say, segment and let me put up segment on colors. Right. We can see segment on colors over here. Oops. I think let's come back to this thing later on. Segment on colors is a different case because a phone works in all the three segments. That is why the entire phone was you know, split into three segments. So let's not do that. Let me put in category and put it on colors. So these are all my categories. Okay. Now let me put in, uh, let me put in something on size. Now size of a bar is nothing but the width of the bar. Size of the bar is nothing but the width of the bar. Right, so I can change that as well. I can assign a variable to that as well. For example, if I say, yeah, uh, do one thing, uh, change this as per, or in fact, I'll just say, let's not put category on this thing. Let me put uh, sales. This is already sales, okay? So I'll go for profit in color. Now, profit in color, we can, of course, go and change the color as well. For example, I'll just click on this drop down and say that edit colors. Once I click on edit colors, we can do n number of things. We can say that, hey, we can go for stepped colors over here, or we can go for the entire range of colors. 
in, we can select one of the colors, which is, let's say, red, green, diverging. This is one of my favorites. I'll go for red, green, diverging. Apply it and click on OK. So this is a chart, which is a colorful chart right now, right? We have two things being represented. One is the length of the bar. The length of the bar is nothing but the length amount. It is representing the sales. It is representing the sales of a subcategory, right? Now, the color of the bar is representing profit of that subcategory. Can you just see in the marks, the symbol of color is giving me some profit, which means that I'm using profit for coloring the bars over here. That is color as a variable is giving is being driven by the sum of profit. So if you look at this particular chart, it is giving me twofold information. Please try and understand this, guys. It is giving me twofold information. What kind of twofold information? The height of the bar and the color. I'm so sorry, my spelling is not that great, guys. So please pardon me if I'm making mistakes over there. Now, height of the bar is being represented by sales. Color is representing profit. So obviously, it is very that higher the bar length, the taller the bar, higher is the sales. Now, how about color? The colors range is represented over here. Look at this particular part. Colors range is represented over here. Okay, this particular portion. It says, if the profit is less than zero, I'm sure this is zero only because, you know, while going, while I was looking at it, I can just see, I mean, while editing, we can say that, we could say that if I drop down and see, edit in shelf, oops, sorry. Right. We could see that in the colors, edit colors over here, zero is the mid value, somewhere zero. We can also click on advance and confirm that here. Center is zero. Can you guys see over here? Center is zero. Right. And this is my sum of profit. This is how colors can do. So I think what I can do is, what I can do is, Now, if I look into it, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hello. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Right. So if I look at it, height means sales. Color over here means profit. Now, the red portion of the color is being represented by the red portion of the color is represented by this is the red portion negative profits and the green portion is represented by positive profits this is loss and this is profit plus this is also in a shade which means that the greener the bar the higher the profit the redder the bar the red the bar I'm so sorry, the red the bar the greater the loss right that's the point over here right that's the case so that's the portion so right now I'm looking at this particular chart in twofold information, guys. Twofold, the two information. I'm okay. Cool. So that's the case. Now I'm not done because I we have just seen the length of the bar over here. There's only one length of the bar and there is color in the bar. We can also vary the size of the bar. Let's say I go to order and I say that let me put in discount as size. Now this will be interesting because the moment I put discount on size, we can also increase and decrease the size guys. Okay, that is fine. We can increase we can keep it to maximum. Now, what is the advantage of this? The advantage of this is I'm looking at this particular chart and I'm having threefold information. One is 
of course if i look at it um, the height of the uh, the height of the bar over here representing sales the color of the bar representing profit or loss and now the size of the bar representing discount now the discount is sum of discount let me click on this drop down over here and go to measure and change it to average now what is happening over here guys please try and understand now this is becoming complicated i understand right but but once you understand this you'll be able to appreciate the level of information conveyance over here one is i'm able to see i'm able to see now this is height color and third one is size now the size of the bar i'm representing discount okay now how do i basically define the size over here we can see the broader the bar the higher the average discount the thinner the bar the lesser the discount so here by looking at the bar i can actually see the relative standing of that particular subcategory because every bar obviously stands for one subcategory now if i look at a bar i can easily see the sales profit and discount i'll get the information about the sales profit and discount about each and every subcategory over here right i don't know how is it happening but i think somehow it keeps on changing over here i'll just keep on format let's go to alignment and say that let's keep it uh, vertical cool right guys now uh, that is i can see can you comment upon copiers if someone says can you comment upon copiers what is happening with copiers i can say of course i can comment upon copies because if i look into it if i look into it copies if i look at the height the height is not that great it's not that big it's around 150 when it comes to the highest sales is above 300 if the highest is above 300 that's a very nice question navin i'll come back to that it's a very brilliant question actually that's a brilliant question right so now if i look at it the color is very dark green which means that this is highly profitable height is not that very high which means that sales is average now if i talk about this can you tell me sales profit and discount the sales is average because the height is average it's or rather i should say average minus because it's below average profit is very high because i can easily see that it's very very green over here okay discount discount is as compared to the um, highest you know uh highest broad category over here which is binders i can see the discount is also average so for copiers i am having average sales very high profit and average discount this is the information i can draw i can also draw information plenty of other information for example tables and bookcases and supplies are in losses because they are in red right now can i say this they are in red okay they are in red that is tables mein sales acha khasa ho raha hai 200k ke upar ka sales hai but it's red which means that it's in loss so tables although is generating a lot of sales is also in loss we can also say that this is somewhere in the top 3 discount giving categories it is also in the top 3 discount giving categories table so please think about tables please think about reconsider tables should we keep on continuing with this particular division or not similarly bookcases your bookcases ke sath to there is a bigger problem over here because bookcases is neither generating sales because the length of the bar the height of the bar is lesser nor is it giving me any kind of profit and on top of that it's giving me some substantial discount is giving the customer some substantial discount as well discount is good if it brings in more profitability or for the present or for the future right discount kyun de raha hu main because i want to engage with that particular customer so that he can keep on giving me orders so ultimately discount should result into profitability either in the short term or in the long term but this doesn't seem to be happening with bookcases so is the case with supplies if you look at supplies as well supplies are also very very less when it comes to 
supplies is also loss making these are the three sub categories which are loss making okay and then of course we can see that the discount however is not very high in supplies but there is no sales and the profitability is also negative we can see that okay because we can just see the uh, chart just next to it i think we saw uh, drawn this chart right these are the three categories in losses right these are the three categories in losses in fact we can put in color over here as well guys in this chart we can just put in because this is right now profit if i take profit and put it on color see something like this comes up and now we can go for editing the color and we say that let's go for red green diverging and if i apply it it's something like this comes up right so i think highest profit is dark green profit keeps on decreasing the green element of the color keeps on decreasing and it becomes red for loss making subcategories okay similarly here i have not only have used colors and length of the bar but i have also used the size of the bar now one question that came from navin is that how can we right how can a person understand that by seeing the chart that width is telling about discount and height is talking about sales of course now if i look at it first of all what is this sub category wise sales so i think one is the first way from which you'll be able to understand about oops i'll just remove this first way in which you'll be able to stand that this is actually representing sales is this sales over here represent what actually is the length length is the primary objective so it's length which is giving me sales length or height of the bar is giving me sales now these two cards over here are representing the case For example here we can see that the size here it gives me the color distribution which indicates that the color is representing what profit here it is giving me the size distribution here as in this particular portion this is giving me profit distribution this is giving me discount distribution this is giving me profit distribution using colors so i represent i understand that okay profit is driven by colors the third one is average discount here the discount bar is representing uh, you know uh, the spread of the discount is being represented by the size right apart from that we can do n number of things we can insert text over here yes we can insert text in the chart saying that okay color is equal to height of the bar is equal to sales color of the bar is equal to profit and then size of the bar or width of the bar to be precise in this case as average discount all right that's the case right so good question nice question right so i think these kind of questions indicate that you guys are paying attention excellent now we can go still for the right we have used i'll just use this i sorry cannot avoid this but if i look at marks we can still take it to another level now height of the bar was sales or i should say sales is represented by the height of the bar in fact i'll remove this i'll just make it simpler right sales is equal to height of the bar color is equal to the profit and third one is a discount which is equal into the width of the bar sorry i think i got changed it i think this is profit is equal to color of the bar right so these are the three attributes of a bar representing three different things over here the fourth attribute is also there we can go for labeling okay we can go for labeling let me do that labeling as in we can put in any label over here label would mean that their numbers will start appearing on top of the bar over here okay so we can take let's say i say quantity sold if i put it on labels right now you'll be able to see the quantity sold over here so in the same chart the label is representing the quantity sold okay 
the height of the bar is representing the sales color is representing profit and the width of the bar is representing discount but now this is too much ek hi bar mein itni zyada information in one chart is going to be tough for a user especially when the user is non acquainted with nuances of tableau or data visualization which generally they are and generally the users will are not aware of these things so uh, a very innocent in a general user non user of a tableau user looks at this particular chart and says that what the hell oh my god now he'll say that okay this chart is taller over here 906 chart is taller than 1400 yet 906 is a lesser value but the char bar is taller over here this 647 why is this chart taller than 3000 at simple cases right why is this 3000 taller than 5178 he is not able to understand that the height of the bar is represented by sales whereas the numbers are representing quantity sold now that's a very very it's that difficult to understand absolutely 100% totally agreed i'm just doing this in one chart to show you to the extent of representation tableau can do for you but as a user it's not a good uh, thing basically to use all the elements of marks in one chart it will complicate the chart and no user wants to see that kitna shandar chart banaya yaar ki samajh bhi nahi aa raha nobody is doing that nobody wants to you know uh, say that they want simplicity in their life okay now this might attract a person a fellow data analyst right who is right now working with tableau and say that oh this is very smart in the same chart he has represented a lot of information i can see a lot of information over here in the same chart that might make sense to a fellow data analyst so do go to this extent in tableau only when only when you are talking to a technical stakeholder over there but I would say that इतना ज्यादा आगे नहीं बढ़ते हैं आइडियली मैं इसमें दो या तीन उससे ज्यादा पैरामीटर नहीं डालूंगा लेंथ ऑफ दी बार और हाइट ऑफ दी बार इज ऑलरेडी वन पैरामीटर इज गोइंग ऑन आई गो फॉर कलर एंड आई गो फॉर लेबल आई थिंक दैट्स द बेस्ट थिंग आई गो फॉर कलर एंड आई गो फॉर लेबल लेबल भी मैं आई थिंक सेल्स का ही डालता हूं बिकॉज आई डू नॉट वॉन्ट दैट लेवल ऑफ कंफ्यूजन ओवर हियर सो आई टेक सेल्स एंड ड्रैग इट टू लेबल्स द लेबल्स विल अपियर ओवर हियर you can drag a variable and put it on top of any one of them okay so this is what marks can do for you this is where color size and label can do for you right so i think this these kind of charts are far more effective than these kind of charts although there is no extra information but if i just put colors over here you know you can easily observe okay these are the three loss making ones if i don't go for color you need to pay a bit of attention over there so if the user has to pay attention there's an element of irritation which comes to his mind whereas if i just do this that element of irritation gets reduced in the user he can say okay the green ones are the profitable ones the red ones are the loss making ones and the red the more uh, red the color is the higher the losses right you can easily see tables is one of the most lost loss making one we can actually say that i don't need this card i can hide this particular card away right so color and size is something that we can do that now size probably is not very useful in bar chart but in certain cases size are very useful for example if i go for bubble chart let me go for something else let me go for um, profit or let me represent Mm yeah let me go for profit i selected profit and i want to want to understand uh let's say let's say let's say let's say let's say let's say let's say, let's say, let's say region wise profit let me click region and profit i click on show me there is something called as bubble chart coming up this is called as bubble chart now the moment i click on bubble chart certain adjustments are already made over here guys can you just see the moment you clicked on bubble chart tableau has already put in some of profit in size region in label and region in color so right now this is called as a bubble chart 
not a great bubble chart per se because there are only four bubbles over here but let's say if i want to let's say change this i'll just remove this and i'll say that let's take a risky move let me go for state and i'll go for state wise profit i'll click on state and profit i'll click on show me and i'll go for bubble chart now these are all states with profit can you just see right these are all circles not, nothing but circles right so what we have done is we have taken state and the states are like this right we have taken profit and put it on size over here now the size of the bubble is giving me profit we can also take profit and put it on color and we can then edit the color we can say that let's go for better colors over here let's go for the same thing i i, I prefer this all the time red green diverging and if i apply this well not a lot of reds are being shown over here which is okay right i might edit color and say that probably uh, red green diverging is not working over here i can put it up i can keep on applying and see how this looks like i'll go for purple oh my goodness i'll not do that again i'll go for red i'll go for green i can do that play around we can play around and see how it looks like right yeah i think this is decent not bad at all all right so we can easily in this particular bubble chart which is also representing profit we can see that there is hardly you know this is all profit there is a problem with this as you can see there is a there are 10 negative values over here guys now the negative values cannot be represented over here reason reason this see zero means a dot in a bubble one means slightly bigger dot 10 means slightly bigger dot but what about minus 3 i cannot have the dot in the reverse dimension over here so it has to be greater than 0 sure navin sure we'll do that okay now that is why profit in this is not a good idea so i'll say that okay then in that case let's keep the profit in color let's go for let's let, let me put in quantity in size so now i can see okay now this is double color over here right so i'll definitely edit colors over here mm. okay let's keep it as it is right now i can see that the in fact on second thoughts i'll change the color again because red means well bad okay red means something which is should be worked upon this is better now i can see that okay the size is being represented by quantity the profit is represented by color right size quantity color profit so which means that which means that although although let me put it like this that although virginia we can say that the quantity sold is lesser but is more profitable than oyo because it's more greener than oyo can you just see Virginia is more profitable than Ohio because Virginia is more greener than Ohio, but the size of the bubble Ohio is greater than Virginia, which means that quantity sold is slightly higher over here. In fact, we can put in quantity sold on labels as well. That way, we can at least see what were the quantities over here. We can go for the entire view, and that way we can, you know, we can play around the size as well. right so this is called as a bubble chart right now i'll just call it i'll just delete this oops i forgot one thing one thing i taught you guys that always duplicate a sheet i'll just duplicate this and i'll just clear the sheet and i'll just take sales on size sales on size and i'll go for Uh, i'll go for a region on was it region or was it state i think it was state right so i'll go for state where is it here it is on detail let's say that go for circle this is my bubble chart 
and I'll go for quantity on label and profit on color. Make sense, right? So this is the chart over here. Right, now this is giving me, this is a bubble chart. Right, it's a bubble chart. Now the number over here is representing nothing but the quantity sold. The size is as per the sum of sales. I'm so sorry, it should not be as per sum of sales. It should be as per the quantity sold. My bad. Right. So now we can go for this. We can also go for the name of the state on label. Right. This is what we can go for. Right. So this is the uh, case over here, guys. This is called as bubble chart. There are two things over here. One is detail and tooltip. Tooltip is nothing but once you hover on the top. Once you hover on the top over here, we can see something coming up, something in rectangle coming up over here. New York, profit, and quantity. This is called as tooltip. If I put anything on this tooltip, that tooltip will start appearing over here. For example, if I put in, let's say, regional manager on tooltip, I can see that who is the regional manager over here? California SADI is the regional manager. Profit is 76, quantity is 7,000, and so on like this. So this is how it can go. Okay, this is how it can go. All right, so this is called as a bubble chart, guys. This is These are certain charts which can be prepared with the help of color, size, label, detail, and tooltip of marks. So you started understanding marks today. By no means we have... Uh, looked at the complete potential of marks. The potential of marks keeps on going further. Okay. So as we keep on going further in the sessions, we can say that, okay, we'll start getting in better charts. Today we have understood filters and marks. All right. Right. So the entire pain is done now. We have understood everything. Or I should say we have... Uh, gain a basic level understanding of what every part of this UX UI pane is being developed. Okay. Can I say this? Every part of it, it is being developed over here. It's been understood. Now, next class onwards, we'll start by looking at how can we create amazing visuals, various kinds of visuals. For example, bubble chart is one of them. Then we have something called as a map, and which is basically uh, for... Well, geospatical variables. For example, if I want to go for state-wise, I want to understand state-wise sales. Oops. Hello. I want to go for state-wise sales. You can see one of the charts, something like this. It's called a map chart. Okay. Right now, let me remove these cards, hide cards over here. Let me click on this. Let me go to edit location. Don't worry. These kind of things do happen. We'll have to change it to country region. And OK, we can see these are the states over here in which this is a map chart. Now we can see the map that is each and every bubble over here is being represented by you know, uh, the location of the world. We can see the location of the cities over there, or I should say the states over there. Now, we can also change the state to cities and put city over here on, on, on detail. Right. So now we can see all the cities. A lot of un this thing is coming up, but don't worry. Don't worry. Right now we can see the cities here, right? So all the cities are being shown over here. Can you just see? We can click on size and improve the size. We can see the cities in the map now. Then we can use, take use of the color. This is where I like to use color. For example, if I put in, let's say sales in color, we can easily see that which particular city is more in sales as compared to the other cities. In fact, why to put in sales in color? I'll go for profit in color. I'll just edit the colors, go for red, green diverging. That is generally my method. You guys can go for some other method. Now we can easily see where the sales is high based on the size of the bar. We can also see where the profit is high based on the color of the bar. All right, so these kind of charts can be drawn on tablet. 
right so we'll see more about these kind of charts on monday monday is the next class that we have saturday sunday we have a break uh we'll have the our next class on monday uh could you please explain in detail about the detail part detail part is nothing but you see if i just look into it detail part is giving me what kind of you know uh it's slightly difficult to find words for it but detail part as you can see there's a drop over here and there's a smaller drops over here it's giving you kind of a hierarchy over here okay it says if i remove state from detail see what happens over here here i think it's okay this is coming up over here so detail is basically uh for example country it is you know uh it, it's spreading the detail further it's taking you down to the state and the city level but again a nice question right i mean see uh, navin start using details more right start using details we'll be able to understand detail is something which is slightly difficult over here to understand unless you use it right so use the details start with the plain chart put things in detail and see what happens now if you have any specific question i think navin said this that if you can please explain me about a specific thing so uh if you have any question specific question navin you can uh, put it in the chat box because i think tableau desktop specialist we are looking at the entire tableau portion in entire tableau i think a lot of things are there in which we can talk about and if you're giving the exam right uh next to this class or after this class i think we should prepare on add to context please prepare on filter context please prepare on how to draw some special charts like pareto charts donut charts waterfall charts these are the kind of charts which will be very very useful right so uh, ensure that you have good hold on how to draw donut these are the charts which are not available over here there are certain charts which are not available over here at all we can draw on how can we draw bar on bar how can we draw stacked bars these are all specific tricks we'll also see this in our class but that will happen probably on tuesday right uh, so but if you are facing your examination just before that i think these are certain things that you should you know look into it next one then you cover the entire session no over the entire session once you cover this session i think you'll be uh, you'll have good information good level of knowledge in which you can probably you know face that examination i can assure you that all right guys i think this is where i am ending the academic discussion of the session if you have any specific doubt if you have any specific doubt please feel free put it on the chat box we'll discuss that if not i'll stay in the session for another two uh, Two minutes, and then we can call it a day for this session. If you have any doubts, please feel free. You're most welcome, Naveen. Most welcome. Yeah, guys. If you have any doubts related to what we have discussed in today's session, please feel free. Hundred percent. We'll meet on Monday, definitely. Do not forget to save your work. I'll click on this and save to Tableau Public first. Or even if you don't do it, even just do Control S. Right? Even if you do Control S, it's going to ask you to sign in. Right now, I'm already signed in, so it has not asked me to sign in again. It's opening the page.
and a page like this appears. I think you talked about this quite a lot in the last two classes. This is your Tableau public. This is what you're drawn and it's being present now in Tableau Cloud. Okay, now I can close the work and come back to my original point. Right. Sure, Navin, I'll, I'll definitely look into it. 100%. All right, guys, let me end the stream now. This is where we end the session and let's meet on Monday. Let's meet with next session on Monday. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend.